Imagine if you didn't have to travel to California or Florida to visit a U.S. Disney park. Imagine if Disneyland had an entirely different second gate. Imagine if you had a park where Disney took you through history or took you across the oceans of the world. While there are the Disney parks we know and love today, over the years there have been well-developed plans for more that never came to fruition. Let's talk about all the Disney parks that never were. How would the course of history go if the Magic Kingdom wasn't the second Disney theme park built, and instead a park in St. Louis, Missouri had been the successor to Disneyland? Walt Disney's Riverfront Square was in development from 1963 to 1965 and was to celebrate the history of St. Louis and the lore of the Mississippi River and the Old West. In the 1960s, St. Louis was in the midst of preparing for the city's bicentennial, with work underway on building the Gateway Arch and plans for a Disney park. Walt Disney's Riverfront Square was to be an enclosed five-story building, projected to cost $40 million, $330 million today, and attract 25,000 guests per day. Half of the building would represent the St. Louis of the early 1900s, and the other half would represent a pre-Civil War New Orleans. In addition to bringing over Fantasyland-like dark rides such as Peter Pan from Disneyland, Walt Disney's Riverfront Square had plans for a Lewis and Clark adventure ride, Jean Lafitte adventure ride, a Bayou boat ride, Haunted House attraction, and Golden Horseshoe Review, among others. The Bayou Boat Ride and Jean Lafitte Adventure would later become realized as Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland, and the Haunted House attraction would come to life in the form of the Haunted Mansion. Popular lore has it that the project was cancelled due to disputes between Walt and the Bush family over allowing liquor in the facility, but the project had a much more mellow demise. Walt actually compromised to allow liquor in adult areas. Disney had required that St. Louis build the facility and fully ready it for the installation of shows and attractions, but the city felt it should only be responsible for the basic outer shell. Due to these disagreements, the project was jointly cancelled in July 1965. But just before the Riverfront Square project was cancelled, Disney purchased large amounts of land in Florida for the eventual development of Walt Disney World. While it's fun to imagine a Disney park in Midland America, a good deal of the projects were realized in other forms at Disneyland. And while an indoor park would have allowed year-round use, more recent ventures into similarly designed buildings have been less successful. <laughs> Tokyo Disney Sea opened in September 2001 and is largely regarded as the most unique of all Disney theme parks. But its concept is actually recycled from the scrapped Disney Sea Park planned for Long Beach, California. Disney Sea was going to be part of a $2.8 billion ocean-themed resort called Port Disney. In the late 80s, the Walt Disney Company acquired the Long Beach property, including the RMS Queen Mary. And in 1990, the company announced plans for the development of the Port Disney Resort on the property. Port Disney would include the Disney Sea theme park, five to six hotels, retail shops, a marina, and a cruise ship terminal. A Port Disney news brochure sent out to Long Beach residents advertised, Here you will find a thrilling journey through the mysteries, challenges, and natural wonders of the sea. Among the highlights of your trip will be an intimate encounter with our planet's most important environmental resource, and the chance to participate in exciting research activities conducted by some of the leading scientists. Disney Sea would follow the model of edutainment. The park centerpiece would be an oceanarium, Oceana, made of giant reflective orbs that would house the world's largest aquarium, along with research centers. The mysterious island section of the park would have an e-ticket Atlantis attraction and a pirate island. Other sections like Fleets of Fantasy, Heroes Harbor, Venture Reefs, and the Boardwalk would feature various attractions themed to the different waters of the world. The Disney Sea project was very quickly met with opposition from Long Beach residents, environmental groups, and shipping companies. Construction would require filling 250 acres of ocean. The new cruise ship port would be in competition with the existing port of Los Angeles, and there were major concerns for the already congested road traffic. By December 1991, Port Disney and Disney Sea had been canceled in favor of another project in development on the West Coast. So the Queen Mary never got the full Disney treatment, but in a way it did. 
The SS Columbia at Tokyo Disney Sea was built as a recreation of the Queen Mary, a nod to what almost was but will never be. So what was the other Disney project in development on the West Coast that caused the demise of Disney Sea? It was none other than Westcott. In 1991, Disney announced the plans for Westcott, essentially a West Coast replica of Epcot. Westcott would be built on the former Disneyland parking lot, where California Adventure stands today, and would celebrate human achievement, technological innovation, and international cultures. At a cost of $3 billion, the project was the first attempt to turn Disneyland into an extended stay tourist destination, with plans for three new hotels, a Disneyland Center a la Downtown Disney, and a 5,000 seat amphitheater. While Epcot has Spaceship Earth as its icon, Westcott's icon was Space Station Earth, twice as large as Spaceship Earth and Gold. Space Station Earth would house a Cosmic Journeys attraction similar to Adventure Through Inner Space. Future World, called Venture Port Here, would have improved versions of Epcot pavilions like Wonders of Living, Wonders of Earth, and Wonders of Space. The Countries of the World Showcase section would be grouped into four regions known as the Four Corners of the World, Asia, Africa, Europe, and the Americas. Asia would feature a Ride the Dragon Steel Coaster, and Africa would house a River Raft Ride. A 45-minute loop boat ride, the River of Time, would connect the World Showcase to Ventureport. One of the most unique aspects of Westcott was that the top three floors of each of the World Showcase buildings would have hotel guest rooms as part of a Live the Dream program, making it the first hotel in a Disney park. The new resort additions would also include a network of monorails and people mover systems to transport guests. But by 1994, the project was already two years behind schedule, and Disney significantly reduced the number of planned hotel rooms from 4,600 to 1,800. During this time, the Disney company was suffering large financial losses from the opening and lack of success of Euro Disney, bringing them to officially cancel plans for Westcott in January 1995. It was right after this when CEO Michael Eisner held the fateful executive retreat where they brainstormed the idea for a California-themed park, Disney's California Adventure. Let's just say Westcott it was not. Not much longer after Disney had announced the plans for Westcott, they announced the plans for yet another park. This park, though, was not in competition for the second gate at Disneyland. Disney's America would be located in Haymarket, Virginia, only a few miles from the Manassas National Battlefield, and would be dedicated to the history of the United States. Development for the park began in 1993 with a planned $350 million budget. As described by a press release, the park would have a unique and historically detailed environment celebrating the nation's richness of diversity, spirit, and innovation. Guests would enter on Crossroads USA, a Main Street USA equivalent set in the early 1800s. The park would feature eight separate areas celebrating various parts of American history from 1600 to 1945. In Native America, there would be a Lewis and Clark-esque whitewater raft ride, a bit of a throwback to Walt Disney's Riverfront Square. President Square would house a Hall of Presidents, and Civil War Fort would feature Civil War reenactments. In the Enterprise section, set during the Industrial Revolution, there would be an e-ticket roller coaster taking riders through heavy industry and blast furnaces. We the People, Family Farm, and State Fair would take guests through the first half of the 20th century, and Victory Field, a World War II era section, had plans for the first inverted dueling roller coaster. In addition to the park, there were also plans for a resort hotel and an RV park. However, many prominent historians were in vocal opposition to the project. Not only would the project be right next to a prominent American battlefield, but how would the park deal with historical events like slavery and native displacement? Would it merely be a whitewashed or commercialized version of American history? Due to the increasingly strong public opposition, the project was canceled in September 1994. Disney's America almost had a second chance at life in 1997 as a potential re-theming for Knott's Berry Farm in California. The Knott family, though, refused to sell their park to Disney, and the final nail was put in the coffin for Disney's America. 
So the hard question is, if you could only bring one of these projects to life, which would you choose? Would you take Disney Sea or Westcott over the current Disney California adventure? How would a Disney park not located in California or Florida fare with time? Could a park themed to American history work and be done with sensitivity? We can always wonder what might have been, but hopefully we can also look at the future and imagine the new Disney parks we might have one day. But thanks for watching.